Hello again. In this video, we are going to do VLOOKUP. Now, a little example is we have all the data here that we're trying to find information from. And this is a simple table that we might find with the shipment IDs, respective shipment IDs, the customer IDs that it's going to, the date the item was shipped, um, the postcode that it originated from, and the postal code it's going to. So, <clears throat> what we need to see, uh, what we need to find actually, are these shipment IDs here. And for these shipment IDs, I would like to get the date and the destination postal code. Now, what we are accustomed to doing, if we're not familiar with VLOOKUP, is probably sorting it so we can find it easier or um, copying and pasting it across. So, for example, we would go for SI3049211. We will go SI3049211 is this one here. So we want the date. And if I hold down control, um, you can actually select more than one cell. And I can copy and paste. So I actually held on control and selected the cell I wanted for date and the cell I wanted for postal code and I was able to copy and paste it across. As a little tip on copying and pasting, that's not what we're here for. What we're here for is to make this whole thing a little bit easier by using VLOOKUP. How are we doing that? Okay. There are two ways to insert the VLOOKUP formula. Um, if you're unfamiliar with VLOOKUP, what we recommend first is to insert it using a wizard. Um, which you can find on the formula tab. So what you're going to do is you're going to put your cursor where you want your formula to go, which is hey. You go into your formula tab and you click on insert function. Now when you go to insert function, you're going to have this box here popping up. So you will see several functions here that you customarily use. In my case, it's VLOOKUP and all the rest of functions you're seeing in front of you. However, you may not have VLOOKUP on your list. So what you can do is where you're seeing type a brief description of what you want to do and then click go. We type a, type a brief description. We already know the name of the formula. So we don't have to type what we want to do because we know the name of the formula. And we go VLOOKUP. And now we should all see it here as an option. So we double click on this and this window pops up indicating the function arguments that we want to look at. So what this does is give you a little description as to what the VLOOKUP is. Yeah. Looks for a value, left more column of table, blah, 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 blah. We'll go through that now. And it also gives you the different function arguments that you have to enter to return your value. So let's start. <clears throat> if we go here, your lookup value is the value that you are looking for. So in this case, my lookup value is this, because I want to find this value in this table. My table array is the table I want to look in. Now that's it for lookup value. There's nothing else we need to do with lookup value, but the table array now, my table array is where I want to look for my information. So my table array is going to be here. Now it's important to remember a few things. Firstly, when I'm selecting my table array, I need to make sure that the information I am looking for, which is this SI3049211, this shipment ID information is in my leftmost column of my table array. So my table array is B5 to F, so B to F, it is in my leftmost column of my table array. Good. Because it looks in the leftmost column, if you look in the description of what the lookup is, of a table. And it returns a value in the same row. Now, the column index helps you decide what value you want to return. This is where you specify of the items in the row, what value you want to return. Now, for this, we're looking at date. Date, if we count from B to F, one, two, three. Date is the third item. So my column index number is going to be three. Range lookup. 
And that's what we have to do so far for lookup value, table array, column index number, and range lookup is now, if we want an exact match, we're going to put in false. If we want an approximate match, we're going to put in true. Now we want an exact match, so we're going to put in false. We normally want an exact match. Um, if you want an approximate match and you put in true, it's going to put the nearest value less than the value you're looking for. So if we go here, and that's all we need to do, we click OK, it returns the date that we want. Now, another way of entering a VLOOKUP formula is by simply typing it. So after we've done it a few times using the insert function, we kind of get accustomed to it, maybe get a little bit brave and confident. So we go ahead and we type up VLOOKUP, open brackets. And even if we can't remember what it is, we still have a little reminder at the bottom telling us what to type next. So when we type VLOOKUP, the items that come up in bold tells us what we have to type next. So next we have to type lookup value. I'm looking for this. My table array, again, I choose the information I'm searching in, remembering to keep my reference that I'm searching in the leftmost column. So my shipment ID must be in the leftmost column of my entire block that I select because that is what I'm searching by. Hey, that's my criteria that I'm using to search by. Next, I'm putting a comma, column index. Now with this column index, I want to put the destination postal code. Now that is going to be one, two, three, four, five, five. And I want again an exact match. So now I can either type false like that, or I could simply double click on false there. Now I close bracket, my fancy formula shortcut buttons, and I click enter. Now, what you notice is that the formula stays in text format. Sometimes this happens, that's okay. That's only because the format for it is in text. So if you go to your home page, you'll notice it says text. You click on general, and it still doesn't change because you need to activate it again, activate the formula again, and click enter. And now it will pick up. So all you need to do is double click in your cell, or when you're on the cell, press F2 and enter, and that's it. Now, that is, we find it, we got the return value quite easily. Now, if we drag and drop it, it picks up fine. However, if you go into the cell, what you notice is that everything is fine. We're looking for the right shipment ID value. The column is the same. However, the entire lookup range, the table array, has shifted down one. That's because I didn't lock my cells. So because I dragged down my formula one, that dragged down by one as well. Now it's okay that this the lookup value dragged down by one because that's what I'm looking up. And these are not going to change because these are absolute amounts in here. So what we're trying to do now is make sure that these here, the range remains absolute values. And it's very easy to do that. What we need to do is just go in. Let's start with the first formula. Go in before your B, put a dollar sign. So you lock the column before the five put a dollar sign so you lock the row and this helps you ensure that the row and column stays where it's supposed to be before the f put a dollar sign so you lock that as well before the 39 you lock that as well so now i can drag this like that here do the same thing now the easy way to put in the dollar signs is go on your cell reference number and you click F4. And as you click F4 and you click F4 again, you'll see it toggles where your dollar sign is. So you can have a dollar sign before 
both references, your column reference and your row reference, a dollar sign before your row reference alone, and a dollar sign before your column reference alone, or press it again and nothing. So we want it before both for this as well as for this. And now I can drag it. So it's all staying in the same table array. I'm all looking in the same table, no matter where I click. It's all the same table. However, you notice there are a few errors. Some of them are fine, but some of them have got errors. Let's see what could be causing these errors. So firstly, let's look at this one. SI3049250. It's saying not available, not applicable, whatever the case is. All this means is they haven't found that information. Your formula is not valid. So they haven't found that information where you're looking. And that's because if you look for SI3049250, it is not here. So that's why it's going to return a no value because we look for shipment ID, this shipment ID, in this row, and it's not there. So they're telling you that for the date, when I return the value, there's no value to return. For the destination postcode, if I return the value, there's no value to return because there's no corresponding value for this shipment ID in this table. And that is a valid um, error. Here, however, for these two, we notice SI3049220. There is a SI3049220 here. So why did we pick it up? Really simple. The characters in I has to match exactly the characters in column B. So the contents of the cell have to match exactly. And what we notice here is that there is a space before SI. So what we're going to do is just take out that space and it comes up. Another reason for our error is that there still may be a space, but you're just not seeing it. So somewhere in here after, there's a space, so you take, you take out that as well. And that's it. You sort it. Now alternatively, it could have had a space in our data. And it won't pick up. So what we need to do is make sure our data as well, line, our data, content of our data cell that we're searching and that the column that we're searching matches up and has a similar contents to what we're searching for. And that's basically how you use your VLOOKUP formula. Thanks again.